What's up YouTube, this is Joe from Zephyr War Games, and I'm bringing to you guys the update to my Goki deck. Now the reason I emphasize my Goki deck is because I've changed the play style of this deck of my personal build a lot. Now it is more focused not only just on Topologic Bomber Dragon, but just on going second in general and just out opponent's boards in the easiest way possible. Make a giant link for like an outer board and out it. Basically is that. Simple as that. Most of the link fours in this deck out problematic boards or just boards in general um, very easily and can get you back into the game and maybe even win you the game just because of how big and beefy they are and even in terms of like the borrow monsters how much protection that they just generally have on them. Now I do main deck some favourite techs in here, um, some of my favourite techs in here um, to help give your big monsters protection because you don't want to just make your giant link monster not have it protected but also not only that but also do you some very nice OTKs. You can get some very nice OTKs with Topologic Bomber Dragon as he is the face of my actual deck at the moment. Um, but also another card in here which I'll explain to why I play it later and what cool uh, what cool OTKs I've done with this deck using the text that I personally have. Now don't you worry for all you big meta decks out there, um, I will bring you um, the, I would explain to you some meta options which I would play if I were to make this the, um, I want to say quote unquote standard, make an extra link win game. Um, that the most competitive uh, top uh, Goki decks play. Um, not that this deck isn't competitive, because as I always do, I always build my decks as competitive as possible, even if it's got a fun strategy in it. Um, but yes, I will show you some techs that I would play to make this more of the extra link build. And in another video, I'll show you the free card extra link um, that you can do using those techs. Um, and get a very nice extra link out of it. So, with all that said and done, guys, let's go ahead and get right into it. So, to start off with the monsters, we have the standard three Super X, three Twist Cobras, two Headbutt Bats. I play two Rising Scorpios and one Bear Hug, as I always done, and the two Octo Stretch. Now, minus the one additional Rising Scorpio. This is your standard Goki lineup, no matter which build you play. Um, unless it's the 100% pure build, which all you play is Gokis, where you play probably like three of all of these cards because they all give you searches. Um, this is the standard lineup. Even in this fun themed build, I still stay by this lineup. Um, I was trying three headbutt bats at one point. Um, it worked, but I ended up having to take one out to fit in some additional cards. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so this is your standard lineup. As well as being standard, you play your free junk forwards. An A ratio of Marauding Captain, and the one is all day, um, uh, the one Ibli as well. Now, this is your standard as well, additional um, text in here, your additional Warriors plus the Ibli. Um, you'll probably, uh, you'll most likely have Marauding Captain at three in the more extra link build. But yeah, um, this is your standard. Um, moving on to the additional stuff in here. Um, I do play two um, Gamma Seals. Um, this is a go second build. So obviously the best thing to go second with is Kaijus. And um, Kaijus can actually do some very nice plays in here. With using cards from the extra deck. Mostly the Bomber Dragon. Um, Bomber works brilliantly with Kaijus. Because you can just Kaiju a problematic card. Put it in front of Bomber, point out, and just blow up everything in the main monster zones. Um, but not only that, you can use some nice link materials with the Kaijus. Now, moving on to the two techs in here. Is one Triggering Worm and one Lilith Lady of Lament. Now, Triggering Worm works brilliantly with um, Revolver's Ace Monsters. Being Topologic Bomber, Gumbler... Uh, bowl load and no bowl sword, uh, not so much bowl load, but definitely bowl sword, um, because uh, triggering worm summons in attack mode. But she actually, if you want to know, guys, uh, what triggering worm does is that if he's used for link material for a dark link monster, you can special summon it from your graveyard, 
uh, two in attack mode to a zone that that link monster points to. It cannot be used as a link material when it does this. And if it's destroyed by a card by a link monster's card effect, you get to draw one card. You can only use one triggering worm effect once per turn. So triggering worm, the obvious combo if you've seen the anime is that you make your bomber dragon with it. You revive triggering worm to uh, bomber zone. Bomber blows it up along with everything else and you get to draw a card so it gets itself back um it replaces itself in terms of your hand advantage and there's a card in the extra link in the extra deck um which can uh, combo quite well with truly well to make your bomber dragon um it also does well with gumbler because you then you can summon to gumbler zone and rip two cards out of your opponent's hand and the reason i said it works well with bowl sword because you can use it to make bowl sword truly well summons itself back to the field in attack mode so then you can attack with Bowl Sword, switch Triggering Worm to Defense Mode, and then attack again. Now, Lilith Lady of Lament uh, goes well with the um, track cards that I play in the deck, which is why I play it in here at 1. Just as a tech choice, I may take it out in the distant future, but at the moment, Lilith does pretty well. Um, and then to run up the, uh, the monsters, I do play the three Ash Blossoms and Joyous Springs. Ash Blossom is just Ash Blossom. It is the most generic hand trap in terms of like it hits the most cards in the game. Every deck searches other than us, you just draw through your deck. And even then, um, Ash Blossom does that for you as well. So moving on to the spells, I play free Goki rematch. And I'm actually taking in Goki face turn as well. Um, the reason I'm taking Goki face turn is because I actually do play the Goki um, link monsters. Uh, mostly just two of them in my extra deck. So you can actually search face turn, summon a Goki, and then replace your only one material uh, Goki with one of your link monsters from your graveyard, giving you more additional link materials by just basically swapping a Goki for another Goki. Um, so face turn has been doing quite well in terms of that aspect, and everyone knows why I play free rematch. The one reinforcements of the army, because there's reinforcements of the army, for revival spells, monster reborn, soul charge, and um, living fossil, along with uh, divine sword phoenix bow to combo with the living fossil in terms of my equip spells. Two cool by the grave. Seriously, Konami, why did you semi limit cool by the grave? It's our response to hand traps. Do you want us to play Millennium Ice for Strict? Is that what you're trying to say? Um, but either way, uh, play, you've got to play two cool, um, cool by the graves because you don't want to get hand trapped. And to finish off the main deck, my trap cards, which is three copies of Parallel Port Armor. If you guys know me on this channel, or a fan of this channel, or a fan of my content, you know how much I love Parallel Port Armor. I think Parallel Port Armor is such an underrated card, it's such a good and useful card. Um, gives your Link Monsters protection on the field for its field effect, and it has an amazing graveyard effect. You can just banish it into Link Monsters, which is not hard to do in um, these days, especially even in traditional Goki. You're spamming Link Monsters for days. Um, and then you can give a monster to um, a second attack that turn. You can cause some so many OTKs with this card. It's not even... Um, it doesn't even have a clause where you can't use it the same turn it's sent to the graveyard. So there's not even like a delay on the graveyard effect. Um, which just makes this card absolutely amazing. In terms of my own personal opinion. You may think I'm wrong. You may think this card is trash. That's fine, that's your personal opinions. But from what I've been playing, and the, when I've been playing with this card, I get so many wins with this card. It wins me so many games, especially in this deck with the cards in the extra deck, um, where you can abuse parallel port armor, giving Bomber Dragon two burn damages a turn, getting you some OTKs, um, ball load, being able to steal cards twice, um, and then what, uh, give one additional monster in the extra deck an additional attack, which I'll get to later on. It's a very cool tech, and I think it works really well with Gokis. And maybe works more better in Gokis than in its own um, standalone deck. So that's my main deck. Moving on to my extra deck. I've got to have it to the boss monster, the main face of my extra deck. Um, which is Topologic Bomber Dragon. I am trying to figure out a thing to replace one of these with, but at the moment, two Bomber Dragons just does well for me. It is my, uh, it is the, again, the face of the extra deck. It is what I go into the most, is what I aim to go to 
just because I want to abuse him so damn much. The one gun blow dragon just to be able to rip cards out of my opponent's hand, combo well with triggering worm and other stuff like that and if you can have it co-linked as well it's pretty nice. And to run up the link for is the Bowl Bowl Load and the Bowl Sword, the two Bowl monsters that everyone loves to play. And now, moving on to the other ace uh, boss monster and the star of the link three is Crusadia um, Equimax. This card is really good in Gokis. I don't know why people aren't playing it. You can get some stupid amount of damage um, with Equimax and Gokis just because all of your Gokis are just naturally big. Um, I mean, like, even down up to your Suprex, Suprex is pretty big, your Twist Curry was um, pretty big for level 3, but your big ones are, like, your Rice Scorpio and your Bear Hug. Being able to just rematch two of those to Equimax zone, um, at one point I had a Rice Scorpio and a Suprex uh, next to Crusade, which is probably, like, the the stand the the make the minimum you'll probably do you'll rarely revive a twist cobra into Acromax's zones but I revived those two it bumps Crusadia Acromax to sixty one hundred like what more that's just huge <laughs> and then you combo it with um parallel bore armor you're giving that sixty one hundred two attacks that turn and it can attack directly twice as well if you can pull that off. But I managed to pull that off against my main. He was up, he was playing Cyber Dragons. I managed to punch into a Seeger. Um, he bumped up Seeger to 42, thinking he can um, reduce the damage and still be in the game. That uh, reduced him by 1900 to 61 exactly. Then I used Power Port Arms Effect, banishing two Link Monsters and it, giving Acromax another attack, and just literally won for game. So like. <laughs> Equimax is really good in Gokis. If you have a copy and you play Goki, um, try it out, guys. Seriously, this is a really good card, a really strong card in Goki. Uh, one Nightmare Unicorn, just another generic Link Three, and I'm uh, moving on to two Goki Links I play, which is Goki Thunder Ogre and the start of the Link Two package, Goki Heal Ogre. Now the reason you play this is because they're nice and easy to go into. Heal Ogre is like a really nice, um, somewhat generic link two for this deck, just requiring two Gokis. Um, and then being a Goki by name, you can then use Headbutt Bats effect to summon itself, ranking up to a link three, which the link three you tend to go to is Thunder Ogre if you're doing that. Because Thunder Ogre gives you an additional normal summon net turn, just to his own he points to, just like Nightmare um, Goblin. Yeah, he's, uh, being a Link 3 and requires Goki materials um, is probably the, his downside, but he doesn't cost you a card in your hand as well. Um, so there's ups and downs to these two. I really like playing these two in this deck now, um, just for those factors alone. But you can get some really nice um, uh, game pushes. Um, just literally going, for, making Thunder Ogre and then just normal summon Triggering Worm to its zone. Make your Bomber Dragon and then provide Trigger Worm, popping everything and drawing a card. Some very nice small combos in this deck that can just net you some nice advantage um, without using too much. Uh, moving on with the Link 2s, we have the one Azolde, the one Phoenix and Cerberus, the one Underclock Taker, which is actually really nice just being able to reduce things um, and then just ramming them with Bomber Dragon, just dealing tons more damage. And then finishing off the Link 1s of Link Rebo and the Nightmare Mermaid. Um, so that guys is the deck. I hope you all enjoyed it. I'll just quickly just um, run through what I would do to change um, change it to be more of the um, extra link. Um, for the extra deck, I take out the one Bomber Dragon, um, the Acromax, and that's uh, and a copy of. I want to say just like the other Bomber Dragon, um, yeah. To make it a more competitive, actually no, I would probably take out the Bowl Sword, um, just because Bomb is just very just overall good. I know, no, most people will probably just take out Bomber. So yeah, I'll just probably take out the two Bomber Dragons and the Acromax, even though I just praise these cards. 
Um, and then for the extra deck, I would put in Firewall Dragon, Trigate Wizard, and another copy of the Mermaid, of the uh, Nightmare Link 2s, um, depending which side of the game board that you tend to play on the most. I tend to play on the Cerberus side, so I'd probably just put another Cerberus in here um, instead of the Phoenix. Um, but yeah, that's what I would take up for the extra deck. And from the main deck, your obvious targets are the three power level armors. Uh, you'll probably take up face turn, these Lilith and that, and probably those. You'd probably take out your mix of these cards, even though I really like face turn, I think face turns are just a nice card. So you've got three, six, eight, and then you'd put in the other copy of, I'd probably just keep the face turn in here, um, to be honest. The uh, Morning Captain, you play free Malicious because Malicious in this deck is now just absolutely busted and helps generate your extra links. Um, the a, I would probably take in a Shadow Mist because with the combo you want a Malicious in your hand. But if you could also do the combo if you have Shadow Mist in your hand, it actually extends the amount of materials that you have. And I'll probably play a copy of Foolish Burial just to dump Shadow Mist to add a Malicious to your hand. Um, I'd play these cards and I'll be showing them off in the combo tutorial um, so that you guys know how it all works. But that guys is the deck. I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, please leave a like and comments down below if you did. Uh, post down what how your Goki decks are going. Um, I'm really enjoying this build. It's going to probably be stick to... It will probably be my main build for the time being uh, until I make some changes, which, um, which if that happens, I will show you guys the changes that I made to it. So, as always, guys, again, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, guys, as always, happy dueling. What's up, YouTube? Thanks for watching that video. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit that like button. And of course, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button in the bottom left-hand corner and the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. We've got more deck profiles, duels, pack openings, and many more Yu-Gi-Oh! videos coming up for you all year round. So don't forget to stay tuned for all of that. Thanks, and as always, guys, happy dueling.